Hi there, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Weekly Roundup. I'm your host, Isabella Leslie Miller, and I'm here to bring you the latest and greatest in the world of data science. This week's news will cover Facebook's new AI system, Cicero, the World Cup's use of AI, the development of a new AI-powered paste management system by TrapView, and NVIDIA's new AI tool, Magic 3D. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on any of these stories. Don't forget to let us know in the comments what you think of this week's news, and make sure you're subscribed so that you never miss another update. Let's get into it. In our first story this week, Facebook has developed an AI system called Cicero that can negotiate, persuade, and cooperate with people. Cicero uses a combination of machine learning and natural language processing to generate persuasive arguments and anticipate the responses of human conversation partners. This technology has potential applications in customer service, sales, and any other field where persuasive communication is important. Cicero uses a unique combination of technologies to engage in persuasive communication with humans. First, it uses machine learning algorithms to understand the goals and preferences of its human conversation partners. This allows it to generate arguments that are tailored to the specific interests of the person it's speaking to. Secondly, Cicero uses natural language processing to anticipate the responses of its human conversation partner and adjust its arguments accordingly. The success of Cicero in negotiating with humans demonstrates the potential for AI to be used in a wide range of applications where persuasive communication is important. Overall, Cicero is an exciting development in the field of AI and it has the potential to revolutionize the way we communicate with one another. By combining machine learning and natural language processing, Cicero is able to engage in persuasive communication in a way that's similar to how humans communicate, which could have far-reaching implications in a wide range of industries. Moving on to our next story, we're taking a look at how, at the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, everything from stadium temperatures to soccer balls themselves will be run on sensors and algorithms. The official match ball made by Adidas has motion sensors that report location data 500 times per second, helping referees make more precise calls. This tech was road tested at several tournaments leading up to the main event, including the 2021 FIFA Club World Cup, and didn't affect player performance. This ball will be used in all 64 of the tournament's matches, and will feed information back to a data nerve center, which officials can use to track statistics and monitor gameplay. The system will also rely on tracking cameras mounted underneath stadium roofs to track the sensor-filled ball, and up to 29 data points on each player's body at 50 times per second. The data points tracking players' limbs and ball location will be fed into an AI system, and an automated alert will notify match officials inside a video operation room who will then validate the decision before informing a referee. In addition to enhancing the experience for fans and players, officials are now also using technology to improve stadium operations and public safety. AI-powered cameras will be used to monitor crowds and detect potential hazards, while stadium temperatures will be controlled using smart thermostats. The use of AI and other technologies at this year's World Cup highlights the increasing role the technology is playing in sports events around the world. In our next story, SPC International has developed TrapView, an AI-powered pest management system. The system works by placing sensors in fields or greenhouses and uses a combination of sensors and AI to detect when and where pests are present and send alerts to farmers. TrapView is designed to be an alternative to traditional pest control methods, which can be expensive and time-consuming. One of the key benefits of TrapView is its ability to detect pests early, before they cause significant damage to crops. This allows farmers to take action before the problem becomes more serious, potentially saving them time, money, and crop yields. This allows farmers to take action before the problem becomes much more serious. TrapView can also help farmers to identify pests that are resistant to traditional pest control methods, allowing them to develop more effective control strategies. TrapView is currently being used by farmers in the UK and Spain, and the company plans to expand into other markets in the future. SPC International believes that TrapView has the potential to revolutionize the pest control industry and help farmers protect their crops more effectively. In our final story this week, NVIDIA has developed an AI-powered technology called Magic 3D that allows users to create 3D models from written descriptions. Magic 3D uses natural language processing to understand written descriptions of objects and generate corresponding 3D models. For example, if a user writes a description of a chair, Magic 3D will create a 3D model of a chair. <laughs> Magic 3D can also create models of much more complex objects, like animals, buildings, and vehicles. The tech is still in development, but NVIDIA believes it has potential applications in fields like architecture, game development, and education. 
Magic 3D uses a combination of AI techniques to generate its 3D models. The system first uses natural language processing to understand the written description of an object. It then uses a technique called latent space optimization to generate a 3D model that matches the description. Finally, the system uses a technique called style transfer to apply textures and colors to the model, making it look more realistic. NVIDIA is currently working on improving the accuracy and realism of Magic 3D's generated models. The company plans to release a public beta of the technology in the coming months. In the meantime, NVIDIA has released a video showcasing Magic 3D's capabilities, which you can check out in the description below. That's it for another roundup. We hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on all things data science. See you next week.